The world stood still as Burkina Faso unveiled the first fully African-made airplane, a gleaming symbol of ingenuity that defied every stereotype about the continent's technological capabilities. This was not just an aviation breakthrough, but a bold statement. Africa was done waiting for validation from the West, and the Sahel had become the unlikely epicenter of a new era. The sleek, silver aircraft, dubbed the Lion of Faso, taxied down the runway in Ouagadougou as tens of thousands erupted in cheers, their voices shaking the very ground beneath them. Its wings, crafted from lightweight composite materials developed in collaboration with North Korean engineers, caught the sunlight like blades, a visual metaphor for cutting through decades of doubt. Artificial intelligence powered its navigation systems, a feature that would later become the center of Western media's desperate attempts to discredit what they couldn't comprehend. The fuel efficiency rivaled that of Boeing and Airbus, but what truly stunned observers was the revelation that Burkinaby technicians had designed the engine from scratch. For once, the term African innovation wasn't a patronizing applause line. It was a fact, etched in steel and tested in the skies. Western analysts scrambled to explain how a nation labeled underdeveloped had leapfrogged into the future. Their reports laced with a mix of awe and thinly veiled suspicion. CNN's headline, Is Burkina Faso's Miracle Plane Too Good to Be True? summed up the condescension, implying Africans couldn't possibly achieve such a feat without deceit. The French Foreign Ministry's statement was even more telling, questioning the origins of the technology, as if innovation had a passport. Captain Ibrahim Traoré, Burkina Faso's firebrand leader, responded not with words but with action, ordering a live, unedited test flight broadcast globally. As the plane soared over the Sahel, streaming data to international aviation agencies, the whispers of AI fabrication dissolved into embarrassed silence. The truth was undeniable. This was homegrown excellence, fueled by partnerships with Russia, China, and North Korea, nations that didn't attach colonial strings to their support. Mali and Niger, fellow members of the Alliance of Sahel States, AES, immediately placed orders, their leaders hailing the moment as Africa's Wright Brothers breakthrough. European diplomats, once dismissive, now scrambled to schedule urgent talks about cooperation opportunities. Their sudden interest dripping with hypocrisy. The shift wasn't just technological, it was geopolitical, a middle finger to the exploitative deals that had bled the continent dry for centuries. Troria's speech that evening cut deeper, will no longer accept 10% of the value of our resources, while others take 90%, 50-50 or nothing. In the halls of the Elysee Palace, aides reportedly panicked, realizing their cash cow. The CFA Frank, uranium mines and military bases was slipping away. Meanwhile, in Washington, think tanks issued warnings about Russian influence, ignoring that Africa was simply choosing allies who didn't treat them as subordinates. The plane's success exposed a raw nerve. The West's monopoly on progress was over, and their playbook of sanctions and sabotage would no longer work. Young engineers across the continent began posting videos of their own prototypes, from solar-powered drones to AI-assisted farming tools, inspired by Burkina Faso's defiance. The Lion of Faso wasn't just a machine, it was a rallying cry, proof that Africa's future would be written by Africans, on their own terms. The roar of the crowd drowned out the engines as Burkina Faso's first African-made airplane lifted off the tarmac, its wings slicing through decades of Western-dominated aerospace history. This wasn't just a flight, it was a revolution, a middle finger to the world order that had long dismissed Africa as a continent of consumers, never creators. The Lion of Faso, as the aircraft was christened, gleamed under the Sahel sun, its fuselage constructed from a revolutionary aluminum alloy smelted from local bauxite, a deliberate snub to France's stranglehold on resource extraction. Every rivet, every line of code in its AI piloting system, bore the fingerprints of Burkinaby engineers trained in Ouagadougou's technical schools, not Paris or MIT. Western journalists clustered at the edge of the runway, their cameras zooming in as if expecting the plane to sputter and fail, their headlines already drafted, African aviation stunt ends in embarrassment. Instead, the aircraft executed a perfect vertical climb, a maneuver even advanced F-35s avoided, 
before leveling off and winking its wing lights at the stunned crowd below. In that moment, the narrative of African dependency shattered like the sound barrier beneath the plane's wheels. The cockpit's voice recognition system responded not to English or French, but to Moore and Diola, languages once, banned in colonial-era classrooms. Russia had provided wind tunnel testing, China shared composite material blueprints, and North Korea's cyber warfare unit helped firewall the navigation AI from hacking. But the genius was unmistakably Burkinabi. When a German reporter shouted, who really built this? Mid-press conference, Captain Traore simply played footage of 23-year-old Isada Sawadogo welding the wing spar, her goggles reflecting the sparks of Africa's industrial dawn. The West's panic wasn't about the plane, it was about the precedent. If Burkina Faso could leapfrog from cotton fields to aerospace in 18 months, what stopped Mali from mastering quantum computing or Niger from building fusion reactors? France's foreign minister hastily convened a meeting with Airbus executives. Their secret memo leaked. We must discredit this before the CFA Frank Zone realizes they don't need us. CNN ran a cheerin. Experts question safety of unregulated African aircraft. Though no such experts had inspected the plane, and Europe's own Boeing 737 MAX had killed 346 people. The hypocrisy was galactic. The same nations that called African leaders corrupt for buying Western jets now accused them of recklessness for building their own. Troy's response was a public challenge. Bring your best pilots, your toughest inspectors. Let them fly the lion and then dare to call it fake. When no one took the offer, Burkina Faso live-streamed the aircraft delivering malaria vaccines to remote villages, its cargo hold packed with solar panels instead of IMF debt conditions. This was the unspoken truth. The plane wasn't just technology, it was sovereignty, the ability to move goods, people, and ideas without begging for visas or overpaying for Airbus's charity deals. In Bamako, students burned French flags while engineers sketched plans for Mali's own aircraft scribbling notes in Bambara to avoid corporate espionage. The Sahel's new alliances weren't about ideology. They were arithmetic. Russia offered uranium refining at 15% royalties versus France's 85%. China built railroads without demanding military bases. North Korea shared missile tech in exchange for mangoes. Meanwhile, the U.S. State Department fretted about Wagner's influence. Blind to the irony that their own Pentagon had 29 bases in Africa and zero vaccine factories. The Lion's AI system became a metaphor. It learned from turbulence instead of fearing it. Adapting to storms colonial maps never bothered to chart. When hackers from a Western private security firm tried to crash its systems mid-flight, the AI rerouted through Algerian airspace, dodging the cyber attack like a matador sidestepping a bull. The attempt backfired spectacularly, North Korean cybersecurity teams embedded counter-tracking software, exposing the hack's origins to a IP address in Lyon, France. Overnight, hashtag FranceHacksAfrica trended from Dakar to Nairobi, with memes of Macron as a cartoon thief sneaking off with a jet labeled, not yours. The African Union, typically fractured, issued a unanimous demand for explanations, while Ethiopia announced a drone program free of Euro-American backdoors. Britain's The Telegraph sneered, Burkina's toy plane can't compete with real aviation. Until the Lion outran a French mirage during joint drills, its radar signature invisible. The secret? A stealth coating derived from shea butter polymers, a formula inspired by ancestral rain-repellent roofing techniques. This was the brilliance Western experts missed. Africa wasn't copying outdated textbooks. It was innovating from traditions their algorithms couldn't parse. In Lagos, a tech hub repurposed the plane's AI to diagnose crop diseases. While in Johannesburg, rappers sampled its engine hum for beats titled, Decolonize the Skies. The West's real fear crystallized. Burkina Faso hadn't just built a plane, it had built a blueprint, and the PDF was going viral on WhatsApp from Accra to Zanzibar. The crowd's roar shook Ouagadougou's runway as the Lion of Faso Africa's first homegrown aircraft defied gravity and Western expectations in a single flawless ascent. Its wings, forged from a breakthrough aluminum bauxite alloy, reflected the same sun that had baked colonial borders into the continent's skin for centuries. A French journalist's microphone picked up his muttered, say impossible, 
as the plane executed a barrel roll, its AI system auto-correcting with precision no human pilot could match. This wasn't aviation, it was alchemy, turning the West's resource curse narrative into raw thrust. Burkina Faso's engineers the new keepers of the Philosopher's Stone. CNN's live feed cut abruptly when the Lion's telemetry displayed a fuel efficiency ratio 40%, higher than Boeing's best. Their cheerin still blinking, experts urge caution. Captain Troria's smirk was visible from the control tower as he released the blueprints online, daring Lockheed Martin to explain why their stealth coatings weighed three times. More than shea butter polymer. Mali's defense minister immediately ordered six units, payment wired in gold, a deliberate snub to the CFA Frank's colonial leash. In Paris, an Airbus executive's coffee cup shattered on his Le Monde headline, Burkina's toy plane outflies EU safety standards. The Lion's AI had been trained on Saharan wind patterns French meteorologists never bothered to map. Its neural net woven for more proverbs about bending storms. When a glitch in its GPS mysteriously activated over Niger's uranium mines, the system switched to star navigation, recalculating via constellations Fulani herders once used to cross deserts. North Korea's cyber unit caught the sabotage attempt mid-attack, tracing it to a Brussels IP address registered to a former French Foreign Legion officer. The leaked screenshots went viral before Europol could spin them. Hashtag colonial cyber war trending from Dakar to Detroit's African diaspora forums. Germany's foreign minister called for restraint, even as Lufthansa quietly offered technical partnerships via back-channel emails Troore forwarded to his 8 million Twitter followers with a laughing emoji. Russia's Roscosmos pledged satellite coverage for the Lion's navigation, while China's Belt and Road Initiative rerouted a high-speed rail line to the aircraft factory's doorstep. The West scramble was pathetic after decades of calling Africa uninnovative. They now accused Burkina Faso of reverse engineering stolen tech. Though no patent filings existed for a solar hybrid engine cooled by Baobab tree-inspired fluid dynamics. At the UN, France demanded transparency, until Mali's ambassador played a 1962 tape of Paris denying Niger's request to process its own uranium. Some nations aren't meant for advanced industry. The silence that followed was louder than the lion's sonic boom over the Sahel.